Good morning. It is a joy to welcome you to Wednesday as we get ready to do our devotional time. I realize it's hard to see me right now. Um, it's uh, it, it, that's not me. Okay, that this is my face, and the rest of me is here, but I'm just wearing a camouflage shirt in honor of the week, which is the last uh, last days of April and May first is uh, the opening day of turkey season. So I'm going to give you a warning that my plan is to take my uh, phone out into the woods with me and uh, you will see me in full camo that day with uh, probably a face mask on and I will be doing this but I, I, short of a pouring rain I'm not going out in the rain but um, if it's halfway decent we'll spend a few minutes in the woods on Friday and uh, so I invite you to, to, uh, to come along never know what you're going to see out there and uh, so we may have a deer wandering by or who knows what but anyway we'll uh, that's my that's my plan at this point also tonight seven o'clock i uh, still haven't found the notes no idea no idea what i did with them i still can't figure out how i could have done anything that would have made them disappear so completely but anyway uh, end result is that they're gone and uh, i'm going to be getting stuff put together again this afternoon and we'll be ready for tonight to finish up our study on how to have a nice afterlife. And then we'll move on. Right now, the only uh, suggestions I've really had primarily are, are the uh, Ezekiel study. And we may very well go there. So uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking at this point. After tonight, uh, we'll, we'll head off in that direction. Um, again, if you have something else you'd really like to study, let me know. And we'll, we'll go from there. Because even once... Uh, the uh, the whole uh, lockdown is is done. Um, I I fully intend to continue to pursue um, you know the Facebook live stuff uh, with the uh, with the Bible study at the very least, so that people who can't be there in church at that time can sit down and spend some time. Um, we'll probably shift it to uh, to six o'clock at night because of the number of meetings we have on typically on Wednesday nights and Tuesday nights and often on well we've got a choir on Thursdays and so anyhow um, it uh, we're gonna continue to do that and uh, we'll see about doing morning devotions um, we may continue that as well uh, anyway we're gonna we're gonna keep it up um, it's so important to grow in the Lord and grow in his word so I would invite you to join with me then as we do that this morning. Lord God, in whom I find breath and life and health and strength, through whose gifts I am clothed and fed, through whose mercy I have been forgiven and cleansed, be for me guide, strength, Savior, and Lord all the days of my life. I offer my prayers through Christ. Amen. Today's reading is from the uh, prophet Ezekiel, and it's Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16. Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16. And uh, it, it'll, uh, it'll sound a little familiar. It's, uh, uh, this, this whole week is, is focused on the good shepherd. And uh, so there's a lot of imagery of shepherding and sheep. And uh, today's uh, words from Ezekiel are, are certainly that. Okay, so Ezekiel writes, For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements of the land. I will tend them in good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. 
I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Man, there is just so much in this. Um, I think that uh, uh, one of the things that really leaped out at me is uh, the, the verse 12, the second verse we read. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. Um, think about that for a minute. Okay, so at the point at which he is with the flock, the scattered flock, they're no longer scattered. Okay, so he has gathered them back together. Now, if you um, if you were that shepherd, and, and perhaps you have been, uh, as a mother or father with a bunch of little kids, um, have they ever sort of gone in different directions and you finally got them back, is your attentiveness to them immediately after gathering them greater or lesser than it was before when they were scattered? And, and of course, it's much more intense. You're, you know, it's like, boy, you're really keeping track now. And I think that's what God is alluding to. It's like, you know, uh, people have been scattered. My people have been scattered. And indeed, we, you, you and I, are scattered right now. Um, we are locked away from each other in a large degree. We are uh, a mess, you know, in some respects. But God has brought us together in, in this bizarre way. And, and you, you know, again, if you know me, you know how bizarre this is. Um, but for me, not for everybody else, everybody else has been doing it for years probably, but for me, this is like really bizarre. And, uh, and God has called us together in this format. And the end result is that we are suddenly, um, you know, we are under the watchful eye of the shepherd who has drawn us together from our scatteredness and is really paying attention to us. I think that's what God is alluding to. You know, as a shepherd looks after his scattered shot, uh, flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep. You know, I don't get I don't get scattered, but my attention is going to be just like that. And uh, and I think that's just a promise of really, you know, undivided attention, as it were, from the human perspective. I will rescue them all from the, all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out of the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture. The mountain heights of Israel be their grazing land. So you, you're getting, all of a sudden, you, you're hearing all this about grazing land, grazing land, grazing land, grazing, grazing land. That's coming, okay? Now I want you to th I want you to listen for that. I want you to listen for the whole concept of food, okay? Specifically, um, I, I realize that none of us ever think about food outside of normal, you know, events. But try to think about food this this way, okay? And because uh, this has got a, a real point to it, I will tend them in good pasture, okay? Sheep, good pasture. That's food. And the mountain heights of Israel will be there grazing land about food then there they will lie down in good grazing land and they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel uh, and uh, okay so there's five in uh, in two verses and, and so um, does that uh, does that make you think of anything? You know, we talked about when God says, "I will be attentive, like a, a shepherd who has just got his sheep gathered back together again." In effect, I told you the story I don't know a couple of weeks ago about uh, my friend who had gone to Utah and herded sheep. Well, the first morning, I don't know that I told you this part. The first morning, he woke up at five and he got up, but it was still dark out, and he made his breakfast, and he went outside, and the sheep were all gone. They were there when he first got up, but they weren't waiting for anybody. And they got up and took off, and it took him all day to get his sheep back. And so uh, he never let them get ahead of him again. Why? Because he's a good shepherd. But he had to draw them all together again. So you know, as, you, as you're looking at this, it's like, I, I'm going to be like the shepherd that never lets you get lost again. Okay, that's, that's God's comment. Now, 
if we look back to the original relationship of God with human beings, as related in Genesis, as related to the story of Adam and Eve, um, what is the punishment for sin? They have to leave the garden. Okay. Now, when we think of gardens, we're, uh, our daughter Alyssa is home with us, and she is a uh, she took a professional gardener's course at uh, at Longwood Gardens, a two year program, and. And she has loved plants all her life, and she's really into it now. And so she has been doing lots of gardening work uh, here around the parsonage. And uh, we've got a little garden put in, and she's weaving a wattle fence, which is like uh, branches interwoven. And anyway, to keep the rabbits out, because we have a lot of rabbits out there uh, of late, last couple of years. And so, um, you know, Basically, uh, you know, the garden, there's beauty in the garden, and there's also food in the garden. Okay, and that was what got them in trouble. Well, they ate food that they weren't supposed to eat. Uh, I, I nearly died once from eating some uh, squid. And uh, uh, it, uh, it, almost, um, it almost killed me. I mean, it really came very, very close. According to my allergist, he said, uh, you were about there. And uh, so, you know, you can eat things that'll kill you. And God said to them, don't eat this because it'll kill you. Well, of course, it didn't kill them instantly. And, uh, and so the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they, they went someplace they weren't supposed to go. They did something they weren't supposed to do. And it revolved around food. So, um, you know, at one level, it revolved around disobeying God, obviously, but um, there's that element. And so what happens to them? Now think about this. What happens to them? They get kicked out of the garden. Okay, the garden is a source of food. Garden is a source of life. Garden, even at that level, was a source of eternal life. The tree of the, uh, you know, the, unless they eat of the tree of, of eternal life. So they get kicked out. And what does God tell them? You're going to earn your bread by the sweat of your brow. You're going to have to work for it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to require that you put forth some significant effort if you want to eat. And so what is, what is God telling him here? I mean, it's, it's a wonderful thing. He's saying, um, I will put you in a place where there is food. Where there is food sufficient for your need. And even more so. He's going to make them lie down. That's I always loved that about the twenty third Psalm. But one day it suddenly dawned on me, um, you know, if you lay down in green pastures, if you're a sheep, you wake up to breakfast in bed. I mean, it, it really is this remarkable, wonderful, uh, spectacular blessing, and uh, and so you know, God is pounding this into the people in this prophetic word. You know, I am going to do that for you, and uh, and the reality is that he is looking ahead to a time when you and I are going to be in that flock. He's looking ahead, uh, not just even to the relatively distant future where he's going to pull them back out of exile, where they have been after being conquered first by the Assyrians and the Babylonians, and then the Medes and the Persians came in, uh, you know, all through that whole time frame, um, God uh, has been watching his people with a plan to bring them back. And he is going to bring them back. And that's really wonderful news. But he's planning on putting all of his people together. And he is planning on making, taking care of them the way a good shepherd takes care of his sheep. And he is going to make sure they have food in abundance now, I think I don't think this is like we're all going to get fat in the afterlife, okay? But um, I do think what it is is it's a it is a redemption. You know, part of what's going on here is a redemption of the punishment of the garden. And uh, and you know, God uh, God is real good about doing that. Um, what did Jesus do with Peter? Peter denied him three times. What does Jesus do? Three times gives him the opportunity to uh, say, uh, Jesus, you know I love you. And of course, Jesus did know that Peter loved him. It wasn't for Jesus' sake that he did that. It was for Peter's sake. By the same token, 
I think his, you know, his claim here on his people and for his people is is uh, is really uh, it's not it's not for God's sake; it's for our sake that we would understand uh, that that reconnection with the creative uh, desires of God in terms of how and why and what for and all of those things of creation. You know, what am I here for? You're here to serve God. But you're here to be in relationship with God. And uh, you're here to be one of his sheep. And uh, and he is going to take care of you. And and he's certainly going to give you things to do. It's not like, you know, eh, we're just going to lay around in the grass and it'll be wonderful because, uh, you know, there's food. Uh, and that's not what Jamie is saying here, okay? You know that. God, uh, God is going to care for us, though, in completeness. And so this ultimate punishment, you know, now you got to work. <laughs> it's like, not that work is always punishment. I, I love what I do. I love being in pastoral ministry. I really do love the opportunity, opportunities that it gives me to be with people and to share the love of Christ. I, you know, man. You ever just sat down and talked with somebody about how much you love Jesus and where that shows and what you've seen Jesus do in your life and those kind of things? If you never have, give it a shot. Actually, if you've never even thought about it, really give it a shot. Start talking about it and see what God brings to mind because you will be blown out of your socks, I promise you. And uh, and that's that's what this passage is about. you know. And then at the end, it, it, it gets into something and we're going, wow, that seems a little harsh, right? You know, all of a sudden it comes out. It says, I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. And I'll, I'll, I will care for my sheep. And then he goes, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. And it, it's a startling contrast there. But, um, but God is also saying, you know, there is a reality here. Uh, there are sheep that do not want me as a shepherd. And... Uh, they will go the way of destruction, and that's a that's a tough that's a tough thing to think about. It's harsh. It's broken in terms of. But imagine if it if we perceive it that way, how broken God's heart must be to have to reject some of His creation because His creation has rejected Him utterly. Well, that's uh, those are some of the thoughts of the day. Um, God is going to shepherd us and care for us, and it just. There's the two promises I want you to focus on today. First promise is, I'm watching over you like a shepherd that just got his sheep finally back together again after they were all over the place. That's my attentiveness. I don't need to. I don't need to uh, uh, do that because I have always been aware of wherever one of my sheep are. But from your standpoint, you need to understand my attentiveness is going to be absolute and direct. And I'm going to take care of my sheep, and I'm going to restore something of the nature of what it was in a garden in creation and I will care for them in that way and uh, and that is the uh, you know that's the wonderful thing now now the final thing I want you to think about is this we, we are prone to be feeling very lonely and outcast right now and uh, I know a lot of people who are really depressed about that they're really broken about that and um, what I would say to you very simply is um, a good shepherd is never out of sight of his sheep. And that's the unspoken promise in this. God is with you. God is watching over you. God is caring for you. God is with you. You are not alone. And one way or another, he's going to see you through this time. And I keep making that promise, and, and but it is, it is a promise. It's not Jamie's promise, it's God's promise. Because again, what are we being called to, folks? We're being called to an everlasting life. And this is just, this is just a part of the prep work for that. With that confidence, will you receive the benediction? And now may the Spirit which was in Jesus Christ be in us, enabling us to know God's will and empowering us to do God's will. Amen.
have a blessed day. We'll see uh, some of you at least tonight at uh, about seven o'clock, and uh, and we'll see others tomorrow, and and uh, some of you we will see later this afternoon, no doubt. But uh, blessings upon each and every one.